that we be holy he asked that we be broken which is why we can sing the song whenever it is that we do this it's us offering ourselves as a sacrifice to him based on the fact of what he has done for us so all we can do is just give ourselves away to him Because he gave it all for us. If this is your desire, won't you just sing and worship with us? Give myself away. 
I give myself away so you can me. I give myself away. Oh, give myself away so you. Here I am. Here I am. Lord, here I stand. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus online evangelistic series brought to you by the five English speaking territories of the Inter American Division. And of course, we are broadcasting live from Montego Bay, Jamaica. I am Denise Lawson Leslie. And I'm Alan Green. And of course, Denise, uh, joining us, we have. Pastor Carlin out of the Cayman Islands, I believe. Yes. Of course, Pastor Carlin, are you here with us? Good evening and I welcome. I am here with you and I'm so the... delighted to be on this platform one more time. And Praise I have the Lord. enjoying these meetings. Amen. God bless you all. That's right. Good to oh, see yeah. you, of course. I want to say hello to all Caymanians. Am I right, Denise? Amen. There Amen. we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, I know, Pastor, you, we do have many platforms connected to this series. I'm going to give you that privilege right now to make mention of those platforms. Definitely. We have all of our conferences and our youth union YouTube channels and our Facebook platforms across our territories. Uh, also in MCU right there in Jamaica on TV in channels 188 and 6118 on the Flow Digital Network. NCO, NCU with the radio have three stations, 91.1, 91.3 and 91.5. Also on Bless TV, WCCN. And also in the Cayman Islands right here, we have Praise 87.9 FM and Cayman TV. Uh, also in the Virgin Islands, we have WGOD, WGOD 97.9 FM, Gem Radio in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And also in Belize, we have the Faith FM 94.1. Also in Antigua, we have the broadcasting service right there. And also check out the website, hopebeyond.net. We are all over the place. So that means you need to share that link with somebody right now. Oh, yes. Thank oh, you yes. so much. All right. And just quickly remind everyone that right after this service tonight, we have our VIP room, Denise. And uh, we have, of course, a prayer points, 24-hour prayer on Zoom. It's 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we are encouraging all our viewers, every member, to be that digital disciple and share and like and subscribe. Welcome to all our first-timers. And of course, we just want to make special mention that our Chinese 
Chinese um, brethren and all of you as Chinese viewers that are celebrating their new year today. Wow. So we just want to say to you, Xing Ying Kuai La. Yes, that means Happy <laughs> oh. New Year in Mandarin. Yes. <laughs> and we just right, want now. you to know that we appreciate you to the effort you've made to our contribution you've made to our society, our culture, our food and music. We love you. That's right. And to continue in the love, we're going to take you right over to the praise team, as they do for us a very special number every night. The praise team. Amen. I want to say good evening to each and every one of you. Welcome to this another evening. Join us now as we sing our theme song, Footprints of Hope, Footprints of Love. centuries ago when you walked through the garden alone you left even then your footprints of hope to be followed by men down the road Adam and Eve yes they walked the path but thought that they hopelessly found but you sent a savior 4,000 years later So many young and old now can tell Of your footprints of hope Footprints of love Footprints of fall when we've lost our way Footprints of life Footprints of truth Lord, help us to walk in your way, in your footprints of hope, footprints of love, footprints of follow, and we've lost our way, footprints of life, footprints of truth. Lord, help us to walk in your way, in your footprints of hope. In your footprints of Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Loving God, Father, Friend, Redeemer. We give you praise this evening, dear Lord. We glorify and magnify your name because you're just simply awesome. You have been so, so good to us, dear Father, and we say thank you. We thank you for the way you have been using our evangelists to proclaim your word boldly and convicting us of our sins. We thank you, dear Father, and we rejoice with you for our brothers and sisters who have come home. Lord, we pray that you will continue to use us to share the link, to spread the word, and to encourage someone else to listen to the messages of love that you have been sending us each night. Father, we present before you our evangelist. We ask that you will pour out an extra portion of your blessing upon him and his family and that you will continue to use him during this campaign to speak in clear tones so that many can find salvation. Dear Lord, we also present to you the technical teams across these five unions as they participate in getting your message to us in our homes and in our churches. Bless them and be with them. Loving Father, we ask that you will please convict us and convert us for service and for use to bring honor and glory to your name. Take charge of tonight's program, every participant, every listener, every member of the evangelistic team. Use us as you see fit. But dear Lord, when all is done, please save us in your kingdom. Thank you for what you have been doing so far and what you will continue to do for us and through us. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. 
Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Romans 15, verse 7. In light of this verse, I want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to everyone joining us today, no matter where you're joining us from. Whether it's your first time with us today or you've joined each night, welcome. And I pray you may be extremely blessed tonight. Welcome. Welcome indeed, welcome indeed. Join us now as we go through this wonderful praise and worship session. As we sing these two wonderful songs of worship to our King, acknowledging that there is none like Him. There is none that will be like Him. And because of this, we can praise Him with all the praises that He deserves because He has done so much for us. Won't you help us worship now as we sing? My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your
Celebration's Integrity As strange as it may seem, integrity is an essential component of health. You can understand the role of integrity in health by making a parallel between honesty and integrity. An honest person may do good or bad, but will speak the truth about it. Acting with integrity, however, is adhering to a moral conviction that won't allow you to do wrong. So integrity means not only saying what you think must be done, but also acting according to your convictions. Integrity also plays an important role in helping us avoid problems. How many addicts started going down the road to ruin because they ignored well-known dangers? Possessing integrity will help you decline offers that could destroy your life. At one time or another, everyone has failed to meet the standard of full integrity. Some have failed so miserably that they caused someone else to be hurt. But despite the inevitable challenges, never forget that your integrity has the power to change your health and your life. Good evening, everyone. One of the greatest privilege we have as we follow the footprints of Jesus Christ is to give as he gave for the salvation of humanity. This evening, you and I are blessed with the privilege to contribute to the cause of someone's being saved in the kingdom of God. If you look on your screen below, you'll see the QR code where you could scan and use the different means of contributing to the cause of salvation. May God bless you as you give, remembering as Paul reminded us that God loves a cheerful. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for this great privilege you have given unto your children to contribute to the cause of God as we follow the footprints of Jesus, walking with him. We thank you, O God, for the platforms by which we're able to give. And may we give so cheerfully, knowing that you love a cheerful people. Bless these gifts that we contribute to your cause, we pray in Jesus' name. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord promise good to me his word my hope seek your he will my shield and portion be as long as a life endures my chains are gone up and set free my god my savior is ransom me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are gone up and set free my God. 
that my Savior has ransomed me. And like a blood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth will soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who calls me here below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. What a joy it is for us to be here at the mercy seat where we can just pray on behalf of the many persons who have sent their prayer request. Let us pray. Father in heaven, what a joy it is to just bow in your awesome presence tonight. Nothing in our hands we bring, but simply to the cross we cling. Oh God, we thank you for the invitation to come. And so tonight we have come, your children have sent uh, the many prayer requests throughout our five English-speaking unions, throughout the Inter-American Division. They have sent their prayer requests, O oh God, because they believe in you. We serve a mighty God. We serve a prayer-answering God. We don't pray to the gods who have ears, but they cannot hear, or eyes, but they cannot see, or hands, but they cannot handle but we pray to the almighty god the, the one who spoke and all things were done oh god you commanded and all things stood fast and so father tonight we just ask that you'd forgive and cleanse us that even as we lift uh, those persons before you who have asked for special prayer tonight our prayers would be heard and answered and so dear god wherever they are whoever they are and whatever their challenges, whatever their needs, whatever their illness, whatever their disease, whatever their heartaches, whatever their pain, oh God, we present them tonight to you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will stretch out your mighty hand, oh God, and touch them. Oh, I pray, Father, that your healing balm would minister healing to them. Give them faith tonight to believe that as we pray that we are agreeing with each other. For you have said in your word that if two shall agree as touching anything on earth, it shall be done by our heavenly Father. And so tonight, Lord, I pray that you would speak a word just like you spoke, dear God, a word. And Jarius is, uh, and, and the centurion's servant was healed. Speak a word tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, for those who are suffering, those who might be stricken with COVID. You are still our balm in Gilead. We still have a physician there, O oh Father. We pray, God, that you would hear, you would answer our prayers on their behalf. There are many, dear God, who are still bound by the enemy. They have been hearing your word as your man's servant speaks every night. But somehow the Lord, the enemy has placed his chains upon them. They are shackled tonight, but we pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would lose your son, you would lose your daughter, those who have been addicted, dear God, those who have been bound by the enemy in whatever way, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would set them free for whom the Son set free is free indeed. Oh Lord, we pray that thou would I use your man's servant tonight one more time. Touch him, dear God, with a life call from your altar. And may as he speaks, Father, may heaven come down and may glory fill our souls, especially those who have not yet accepted you. Oh God, I pray that the word would reach the recesses of their hearts and as they listen and as conviction are brought, is brought to them by the power of your Holy Spirit, oh God, save your children tonight. Move, transform, loose, deliver, 
Bring deliverance, O God, and victory to your people. And tonight we just give you all the praise. We just give you all the glory for you deserve it. And Father, we look forward to the day when all campaigns would come to an end. And you will come, O God, to claim all those who would have accepted you. May we all be saved in your eternal kingdom on that day. For we ask it in no other name but the precious, powerful, and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Let everybody say, Amen and Amen. In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of your hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispers, there is no use in trying see there's no end to your sorrow and no hope by and by but i know you are with me and tomorrow i will rise Never darkens the sky till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. beautiful song there wonderful rendition by Michael Trowers you know Denise I heard you spoke Chinese early and Mandarin, sung so well. yes. yes and uh, I'm gonna try my Chinese gift so all Chinese I want to say something in your language and pray the Holy Spirit will interpret this so you understand it all right are we ready go ahead Alan go ahead and uh, that's the, the Lord, Lord loves, loves China. Oh, yes. There yes, you go. Yes, yes. Pastor, Amen. Can, you, can you share some Chinese gift with us, Pastor? I can't share any Chinese, <laughs> but I can share some Spanish. Dios ama a China. There we Amen. go. There we there go. go. All right. I, I, yo comprende. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's happening. It's fun right here on the Footprints of Hope, Amen. walking with Jesus. We oh, laugh yes. and we, we, you know, I mean, it's mixed emotions here. And, uh, and we just want to welcome our first viewers. Oh, first yes. 
Alan. And because we have different cultures, there we, we want to embrace each culture that That's is right. represented here, right across the Inter-America division, yes. because we love each and every one, that all so our true. viewing friends. That is so true. That is so Pastor true. Pastor Carlong, I, I mean, what are your expectations tonight? Tonight, oh, I'm, I'm gearing up for part two. Oh, last night was a tremendous, sobering message, deep truths, and we just pray that each and everyone who listened to the message last night, and even if this is your first time, just open up your minds and open up your hearts to receive the word of God from our evangelist, Pastor Glenn Osamas. He has been uh, pouring out his heart in these messages, and I know there's a special message and a special word of truth waiting for us this evening. So just open up your hearts and your minds to receive what the Lord is going to say through his mind this evening. Oh, praise Amen. the Lord. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Open up your hearts and your minds. That's the word. So we're going to go right over now to the anointed ones as they pave the way for the spoken word. Be blessed. If I ask for things that I should not ask for, if I prayed for things selfishly, if I ask for myself, and not for my neighbors take this veil from my eyes let me see it's not my will but thine be done I love all the rich and 
and not the poor Then what good would I have done for Christ Christ my Savior since my enemies my enemies they do the same steps all the way that we can trust he is leading good evening everyone it is my joy to welcome you one more time to the place where we take 
special time to look at the word, to seek a lamp for our feet and a light to our path. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all our days down here would be perfect days? But there will come a time when we will have life and times without the kind of tragedies and trials that this life often throws at us. And so now I want to welcome you, whether you are from the Caribbean, the continents, the islands of the seas, however small they may be. And today I had the pleasure of communing with folk from the islands and the continents. Today I have the, I had the privilege of praying with folk who are interested in finding God's will for their lives. Today I have the awesome trial of being heartbroken with people who are trapped in trials, trapped in struggles, trapped in stuff that they wish they could get out of. And so we want to welcome our partners tonight from participating countries like Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, the Grenadines, the wonderful country of Guyana with all of its outlaying regions, St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John, Tortola, Virgin Gorda, it is our joy to welcome you from St. Martin and Saba and Guila. Can I shout out those in Trinidad and Tobago and St. Lucia? Spoke to someone, I told her when I was flying to St. Lucia for the first time, I got a little nervous when I saw the plane approaching two mountains, one on my left and one on my right. But the pilot seemed to know his way. I want to welcome you from Suriname, from Antigua and Barbuda from St. Kitts and Nevis from Montserrat I want to welcome you from Spanish Town and from Westmoreland from Greenvale in uh, Central Jamaica from August Town in Kingston I want to welcome you from from the beautiful Cayman Islands from the white sandy beaches of Providentialis in Turks and Caicos I want to welcome you from where my sister-in-law resides that's Port Grand Bahama. I want to welcome you from Central Bahama, from Nassau, and hey, New Providence, if I stop by tonight, will I get popcorn? I am told that the best popcorn in the world is served at that big screen right there at uh, New Providence Church. And so go by there and tell them you've come to taste the popcorn, but make sure you watch the screen tonight, all right? I want to welcome you from everywhere, from from the plains of Westmoreland, from the screens in Hopewell, from the screens in Old Penn and New Penn, from, from the screens all over. Now, I, 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 I want to let you know that you are too many to call, so all of you, I want to welcome you, everyone. I want to welcome you with the joy of the Lord, with the love of Jesus. And I pray tonight, if you have a friend and you are not sure if they are connected as yet, I trust that you will make sure that you take the time now to, to call them. Tell them it's time to get online, time to get in this space, time to connect with Footprints of Hope because something good is coming the way tonight. And so one more time, while they seem to get more beautiful and more handsome as the days go by, uh, 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 we're gonna, I thought it should be five of them, but tonight we have one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? We're going to testify of the goodness of God. And that's our song for tonight as we lift our hearts. I love you, Lord, and I wanted to sing with them. And before they sing, before they sing, someone sent me, someone sent me a clip of a two-year-old boy singing, I, 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 goodness keep running after me i wouldn't tell you it's wayne son because wayne can't sing the boy must have gotten it from his mother are you listening to me uh he was singing uh about the goodness of god that keeps running out i couldn't even make up the words but as i listened i interpreted that that's what he must have been singing and he's listening to you tonight
love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days have been held in your hands from the moments that i wake up until i lay my head i will sing of the goodness of god your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down i surrender now i give you everything your goodness is running after heaven we're alive tonight because of your goodness and your mercies to us we're alive tonight God because your loving kindness never fails and so one more time we pray that you would climb down and inhabit the precincts of space wherever there's a screen tonight wherever there's a house wherever there's a smartphone in somebody's hand Wherever there is a church, wherever there is a place where your word tonight, the everlasting gospel is carried, inhabit the precincts of that place, however humble, however large it is. O oh, thou blessed rock of ages, we pray tonight you'll do something special for the glory of your name and the saving of a soul that's seeking to do right. May your will be done tonight. May your name be glorified. And we'll be careful at the end of our sojourn tonight. And we'll give you all the praise. Now bless everyone who's connected. Bless every device connected. Bless every country connected. Bless every continent and island connected. Almighty God pray tonight that the everlasting gospel will be carried to the ends of the earth as you give the winds a mighty voice now touch this sinful lip of wretched clay one more time and do what you will we ask in Jesus name and let God's children say today I had a long conversation and I know you're listening to me and I I came here with you on my heart and I, I can't call your name but you know that I'm talking to you right now. You've been in that condition, shocking up for 20 plus years. Do not waste your eternal salvation. I look you in the eye right now. We spoke today at length, and I chose now just to remember it because there may be many more like you who've been spending your life in a relationship, a concubine relationship. Listen to me carefully. Don't let the devil trap your soul in that. I, I carry the burden on my heart. I can't get rid of our conversation. It's not like a TV screen I can turn off. You're a, you, I carry you on my heart to God. And, and the Holy Spirit says there may be thousands more like you. What a wonderful thing it would be if during this week you'll make one last appeal to that man or to that woman and say listen if you can go to heaven with me I will not go to hell with you what a wonderful thing it would be if you would make that one last dash tonight because your soul salvation rests upon it what use is it to be living together for 5, 10, 15, 25 35 years and if all of these years he can see that he, he ought to be married to you, then you ought to determine whether or not you're prepared to go to hell with him. And so whether you are in Jamaica, whether you are in Guyana, whether you are in St. Lucia, whether you are in Barbados, whichever country you are in, whether you are in Trinidad and Tobago, if you're caught in that vice grip, 
God asked me to tell you it is time to make a decisive decision. Your salvation rests on it. If he will not go to heaven with you, you can't go to hell with him. If she will not go to heaven with you, you can't go to hell with her. And so I appeal to you tonight, you don't even need money to be married. If you can be living together for all these years, all you need is someone licensed by the government of your country to do marriages. A witness, two witnesses, and it's a done deal. If you're here, anywhere in the West, and you can't find a marriage, so call us up. We'll find somebody who will help you through. If you're in Guyana, call up the conference president. Call up the pastor. Call the conference. Wherever you are, let's make this week put the devil to shame. The Bible said marriage is honorable. Are you listening to me? Concubinage is of the devil. Put the devil to shame. And bring your life in harmony with the will of God. The song says, not my will, thine be done. Pray Jesus. Are you listening to me? I should take in the whole sermon and then talk to you on that. Listen to me, beloved. In the Garden of Eden, God blessed two institutions. And the devil hates both of them. In the Garden of Eden, God blessed made and he ordained and he blessed the seventh day of the sabbath and the devil hates it in the garden of eden god instituted holy matrimony and the devil came up with concubinage you've got to decide whose side you're on if i were you i'd make a decision to be on god's side are you listening to me your salvation depends on it and during this week God does not need a whole day or a whole week to save anybody. This coming Saturday is your new beginning of a new life with Jesus Christ. This coming Saturday, you're going to bury the old man by baptism. You're going to rise up to live a new life, walking by faith, walking in the footprints of Jesus Christ. This coming Saturday. I want to talk to you heart to heart. The devil knows his time is short. The devil knows that if you ever make your mind up, there is no mountain God can't help you climb over. There is no Red Sea God can't part for you. The devil knows if you should ever make your mind up, there's no challenge you have that God can't fix. Are you listening to me? I feel something crawling in my spirit tonight. There is no challenge you have that God can't help you fix. Are you listening to me? I want to look you in your eye in the camera right now. There's a burden on my heart for somebody. I don't know who you are. I don't know what country you're in. I don't know your name. I don't know where you live. But I know this one thing, Almighty God, is sending you a summons tonight. It is your destiny. It is your salvation. And you want to make your calling and election sure I didn't plan to go there but, but, but there's a song that, and it's my preaching time don't worry I'll send you home by 8 o'clock if I had to do it in two parts but I'm going to ask them to come and sing for me even one verse of that song my stubborn will at last hath yielded I would be thine and thine alone yet this one prayer my lips are bringing Lord, let in me thy will be done. And if they're gone, then let me quote the words again for you. My stone has yielded. I be thine and thine alone, yet this one prayer. My lips are bringing, Lord, let in me thy will be done. Sweet will of God still fold me closer till I am wholly lost in thee. I went to a funeral recently. The lady did her best to give her love to the gentleman that she claimed to be the love 
of her life, but he became a beast in her bed. Domestic dispute beaten up. She carried it, bottled it up on the inside, didn't share with anybody, but her good friend who found out pleaded with her to save her soul and save her life, but she stayed there until he killed her. Are you listening to me? Listen, if I speak tonight with pain on my heart, it is because she was my grand aunt. Thirteen stab wounds in places I can't even tell you about. He became a beast in her bed. Listen to me, beloved, if you need to talk to somebody confidentially, hear the preacher tonight. Who's that beast in your bed? And whilst it is true oftentimes that some lose their life down here, slaughtered without mercy, millions more are in danger of losing their eternal salvation because of the beast in their bed I'll come to that momentarily but I feel that I need to, to start a night with just one verse of that song my stubborn will at last hath healed that I would be thine and thine alone yet this one prayer my lips are bringing Lord let in me thy will be done my stubborn will you there I would be thine I would be done and thine alone but this my pearl my heart is bringing Lord let me in thy will be done sweet will of God Sweet will of the Still fold me closer. Still fold me closer. Till I am wholly lost in thee. Till I am wholly lost in thee. Sweet will. Sweet. of it when I get done tonight. I want to begin tonight by reading with you, reading for you, reading in your hearing and asking you to read with me. And my daughter is going to cut my throat, but I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll talk with her when I'm done. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 5. That's Isaiah chapter 54 beginning at verse 5. And it says, For thy maker is thy husband the Lord of hosts is his name and thy redeemer the Holy One of Israel the God of the whole earth shall he be called for the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou wast refused saith thy God for a small moment have I forsaken thee but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith thy Redeemer. Jump down to verse 10. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my loving kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, said the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Here's a wonderful expression of God's loving kindness 
We deserve death. But he chose to, to use that, that symbol of matrimony, that symbol of, of marital love and marital bliss to say with us, to say to us, to say of us that he wants to have that kind of an endearing relationship with those who are anxious to be saved. He said, thy maker is thine husband, thy redeemer. Then God says, for a while, because of your sins, I pull my hand back. For a while, my wrath was on you, but with great mercy. For a while, and you have the contrast with a little while and great mercy. You have this, you want to know that God will not tolerate our sin. God has to punish sin. And so, beloved, he found a way to be just and merciful at the same time. And oh, you ought to say amen tonight when I get through with this. You ought to understand that, that God hates our sins, but he loves the sinner. Are you listening to me? God hates lies, but he loves truth. Are you hearing me? And so God says, listen, for a little while, I hid my face from you. He said, I called you as a woman forsaken. The Bible uses the term woman to represent the church. And God says, like a woman forsaken, abused and refused, I have chosen to call you. I picked you up. I cleaned you off. Sent my word to you. Then God says, for a small moment, I have forsaken you. Yet with great mercy will I gather you. My best verse of all is verse 10. The mountains will depart and the hills be removed. Even in the midst of your brokenness, when you feel that God will not come through, he said the mountains will depart. When you think you're too broken to be made whole, when you think you're too, be, you're too wretched to be cleaned up, God says the mountains shall depart, but my loving kindness I will never allow to leave you. And I don't care how broken up you are tonight. Hear me, young man. Drugs might have made you a slave. Hear me, young lady. Your life may have been messed up. Hear me, religious person. You may have been trapped in error. But God says, I never give up on you unless you make it impossible for God to save you. And I want to give a contrast. Here we have God saying, he the lover, he, to the church, the woman, he said, your maker is your husband. Jump with me to a contrasting picture. I'm taking it down to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation, the 17th chapter. Come with me quickly. We have some stuff to cover, and I intend to send you home by 8 o'clock tonight. Are you listening to me? Revelation 17. You have to listen fast. I'm going to be running fast. Revelation 17, 3 says... So he carried me away in the wilderness and I saw a woman sit on a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. Now put your finger right there and jump with me to Daniel. We were there last night so we're going to work the Bible tonight. Daniel chapter 7 I'm going right back to where we left off last night. But if you're joining us for the first time, here we were, Daniel 7, and I'm going to read verse 7, verse 8, 19 to 21, and onwards. 7 says, After this I saw in the night vision, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly. It had iron teeth. The Bible said it had ten horns. Verse 8, I consider the horns... Behold, there came up among them another little horn before there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, this horn were, it had eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Jump down to verse 19 of the same chapter. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from the others, exceeding dreadful with iron teeth, and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces. Verse 20, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other that came up before them, before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth, that spake great things, 
whose look was more stout than his fellow. Verse 21 said, I beheld and the same horn, the same little horn made war with the saints and prevail against them. Jump down to verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth king on the earth which shall be diverse from the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall break in pieces. Verse 24, the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and shall be diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings. Verse 25, and this little horn which would subdue three kings, this little horn that came up among the ten horns, this little horn that came up in the fourth beast, which is the fourth kingdom on the earth, the Bible said three significant things. I'm just reminding you what I said last night or telling you if you're joining us for the first time. So listen fast as I run fast. Number one, he shall speak great words against the Most High. Number two, he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Number three, he shall think to change times and laws. Are uh, we going to work the Bible now? Jump down with me to Revelation 13. We are comparing scripture with scripture. We're looking at prophecy, outlining what God says would happen. So, Revelation 13, way back. Back then, let's go down quickly now. The 13th chapter of the last book of the Bible, Revelation 13. And I want to read verse 1. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. How many heads? Seven. How many horns? Ten. The Bible said in Daniel 7, this fourth beast is the fourth kingdom which shall arise out of the earth. The ten horns represent the ten divisions that came out of the fourth kingdom. The fourth kingdom is the Roman kingdom. The Bible said there came up a little horn among them which uprooted three horns. During the last days of the Roman Empire, pagan Rome gave way to papal Rome. The rise of papal Rome uprooted three kingdoms in order to exercise its authority. Are you listening to me? The Bible said in verse 5 and they were given unto him a mouth speaking great things blasphemy and power was given him to continue forty and two months. Daniel said time and times and the dividing of time. Revelation gives us an easier calculation covering the same period. 42 months prophetically is equal to 1,260 years, exactly the time from 538 to 1798 after the breakup of pagan Rome when papal Rome held sway. I know I'm covering a lot. Are you listening to me? Now I want to take you further. Who's that beast in your bed? The Bible has the picture of a woman representing God's church. But a, an impure woman also represents the church, excepting that it represents the church in its apostasy. When Jesus left here, he left the disciples keeping the commandments as he taught them. When Christ left here, he left them keeping the seventh day Sabbath. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of the gospel writers, all of the apostles, Paul and Peter, James and John, they kept the seventh day Sabbath. Where did we get the other one from? That's the burden of our message tonight. Who is that beast in your bed? The bed here, my friend, represents the place of intimacy. Jesus said of the church, Thy maker is thy husband. He gives the church its instruction. Are you listening to me? He gives the church the Bible. He gives the church the commandments. He gives the church the seventh day Sabbath. Who is that beast in your bed? 
If it ain't Jesus, you're in trouble. Are you listening to me? This beast in Daniel 7, this beast in Revelation 13, wants to have an intimate, comfortable, accommodating relationship with the church. Don't forget now, when, when, when the Bible said, Thy maker is thy husband, the Bible is saying to the church that God, your sovereign creator, want to have this close relationship with you. The song that says, Hold me so close until I feel your heartbeat, that ain't Darren Adis, it's the Lord. Are you listening to me? God wants to have this kind of relationship, this closeness that, that he holds you so close to his bosom that you can feel his heartbeat. Are you listening to me? He wants to be undercover lover with the church. Are you listening to me? So, so, so if that relationship, if that intimate relationship is not with the word and not with the God of the word, then it has got to be with the beast. And so who is that beast in your bed? Revelation said that this woman, this system of apostasy that came out of pagan Rome, this papal system that, that inhabit the ruins of pagan Rome, uh, began uh, the church, my friend, the universal church, was a place where God's truth held sway. But as time rolls on, I'll show you tonight, that the fourth beast that Daniel calls the fourth kingdom began as a political kingdom. Out of the ruins of ancient Europe came the little horn that the Bible said is responsible for its religious persuasion. I want to share with you from the book The Monumental History of Christianity, page 42 and 43, write the source down. The Monumental History of Christianity, page 42 and 43. It says here, out of the ruins of the Roman Empire, there gradually arose a new order of states whose central point was the Papal See. Can I shock you with a little piece of geography? The Bible said that the woman sits on a hill or on a city with seven hills. Only one city in the whole wide world sits on seven hills. Can I tell you where it is? It's the Vatican City. Listen to how straightforward the word of God is. The Bible said that the fourth beast is the fourth kingdom on the earth. The Bible said out of this fourth kingdom, there would be ten horns representing ten kingdoms. These are the ten divisions of Europe. Out of Europe and its ten divisions came up this little horn when the pagan Rome side fell, it gave birth to the papal side of Rome. Are you listening to me? Now let me run fast. We, we have something to cover. The next page said there, therefore inevitably resulted a position not only new but very different from the former. The Bible said in Daniel 7.25, he would speak great words against the Most High. Listen fast, let's run fast. He shall speak great pompous words. Daniel 7.25 said, The saints shall be given into his hand time and time and the dividing of time. Revelation 13 said, For 42 months, those two time prophecy cover the same period. 1,260 years from 538 when the Pope was declared uh, to be in charge of a certain section of Rome until the French Revolution, exactly the time period that the prophecy said. And I ask you, who's that beast in your bed? The Bible said he would think to change times and laws. The Lord God said in Psalms 89 and verse 34, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. God didn't change his word. When Christ died, the Bible said he died the day before the Sabbath. 
and he rose from the dead the day after the Sabbath. I'm going to read that to you when I get done. Let me run fast tonight. So beloved, this fourth beast, out of whom came the religious side of pagan Rome, sought to alter the fourth commandment. What does the fourth commandment says? It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Along comes Rome and they said, no, we have to alter that. But let me walk slowly with you. The Bible said in Acts 20, Paul is writing. He said, also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things. Doing what? Speaking perverse things in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 9 Jesus said but in vain will men worship him when they teach for doctrines the commandments of men follow me carefully as we run fast in the book ancient church history uh, volume 6 page 7 it says in the interval between the days of the apostles and the conversion of Constantine rites and ceremonies of which neither Paul nor Peter ever heard crept silently into use and then claimed the ranks of divine institution. Cardinal James Gibbons in the book The Faith of Our Fathers, page 89 said, you may read the Bible. Now watch this. This is not an Adventist book. This is not a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. Cardinal James Gibbons, we don't use the term cardinal. It's a Roman priest. Hear what he says. He said, you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find one single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. Then, if you thought that that was shocking, he said the scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday. Let me take two minutes and jump with you so you can see for yourself in the Bible. I'm going to go to Matthew and Mark and Luke and we go identify that even up to the time when Jesus died, his followers kept the same Sabbath that he taught. I want to take you first of all to Matthew chapter 27. Quickly, Matthew 27 and verse 58 said that Joseph of Arimathea went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus and Pilate commanded the body to be delivered and when Joseph had taken the body he wrapped it in a clean linen laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn out of the rock and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher. Beloved you want to, you want to hear this? Joseph was a rich man, a multi-millionaire. But he discovered it doesn't matter how much money you have, if you don't have Jesus as your Savior, you are bankrupt. Scribes and Pharisees were quarreling with Jesus. But Joseph, even in his death, identified with Jesus. He buried Jesus in his own new tomb. He gave him royal burial. I'm glad to tell you, you may be a multi-millionaire tonight. Here's an example in the Bible of a rich man who surrendered to Jesus. Wasn't ashamed of following Christ. And so my friend, they buried him on the day he died. And the world knows he died on the day we call Good Friday. Matthew 28 and verse 1 said in the end of the Sabbath God does not send truth to condemn anybody the Bible is clear Sabbath comes between crucifixion day and resurrection day I will show you who changed it who is that beast in your bed your maker is your husband he wants to be your lover and he says if you love him you ought to keep his commandments and that includes the fourth commandment the bible said in Matthew 28 1 in the end of the sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week what one thing is clear right here when the first day of the week comes sabbath is already gone 
when resurrection Sunday comes, Holy Sabbath is already gone. When crucifixion Friday comes, Holy Sabbath is not yet. Are you listening to me? The only day that comes between Good Friday and Easter Sunday is the Holy Sabbath day. But the beast of Revelation 13 and the beast of Daniel chapter 7 sought to change times and God's holy law. Well, let me run to Mark quickly. Let me run to Mark. That's Matthew. That's Matthew. And if you notice, I'm just in the New Testament right now. Where am I? In the New Testament. Mark 15 and verse 34. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabathani, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Bless the Lord God. I've got to pause and tell you right here, right now. At that moment, Jesus Christ was carrying your sins and my sins upon his shoulder. At that moment, he has your sins in Grenada. He's got my sins in Jamaica. He's got your sins in Trinidad. He's got your sins in the Cayman Islands. He's got your sins in St. Lucia. He's got your sins in Grenada. He's got your sins in Barbados. He's got your sins in USA. He's got your sins in Canada. He's got the sins of the whole wide world. And when the thunderbolt of God's justice struck him, he paid the price of sin and he cried out, my God! God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He paid the price. Hallelujah. But you don't have to go to hell. Beloved, he died the day before the Sabbath. And even in his death, he rested on the Holy Sabbath day. In creation, he rested on the Sabbath in redemption he rested in the tomb on the sabbath but on sunday morning it was time to work again and early i said early on sunday morning early on resurrection morning when the sabbath was passed i hear ira de santi says up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes and he lives forever Forever, forever and ever, forever and ever and ever and ever, he lives. Mark says, Mark says, in Mark 16 verse 1, and when the Sabbath was passed, and when the Sabbath was passed, verse 2, very early in the morning, on the first day of the week listen to me the bible is clear the first day of the week is not the sabbath day the bible is clear read it for yourself when the sabbath was passed this is new testament this is at the death of jesus when the sabbath was passed very early in the morning on the first day of the week he rose from the dead how did we get the change I'm running fast Cardinal James Gibbon says the scripture enforces the religious observance of Saturday are you listening to me in the convert catechism of Catholic doctrine published in 1977 page 50 is the question and answer segment this is from the Roman Catholic Church and I don't call the name to condemn church I call the name just to be authentic to tell you where it comes from and they don't mind me telling you because they don't mind me telling you they claim they have the power to change the Sabbath the Bible the, uh, nearly said the Bible so in the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, uh, published by Peter Gehrman, 1977, page 50, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Why do we observe Saturday, in Sunday, instead of Saturday? Listen to this. Hear this. I'm quoting to you from the Catholic Doctrine. It says, 
because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. This is not the Adventist Church Manual. Are you listening to me? I'm reading to you from the Catholic doctrine. It says we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. The Bible said the fourth beast would have a religious side to it that would attempt to change the very law of God. Are you listening to me? And so, beloved, I continue. Why do we observe Saturday, Sunday instead of Saturday? I read it for you. Then it says, in Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 4, page 153, write the source down, write it down. Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 4, page 153. By the way, you don't have to take my word for it. I have, I have four minutes to get done. You can go to the Library of Congress. You can even search on the internet for yourself. It says, the church, after changing the day of rest from the Jewish Sabbath or seventh day of the week to the first, made the third commandment refer to Sunday as the day to be kept holy. You want to know how they get the Sabbath command to be at number three when in your Bible it's at number four? Have you ever wondered why some churches you don't see any image or any statue? Because the third commandment says, thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven images. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor serve them. But the Roman church took out that one and split number two into two and so you have commandment number four falling at the place where number three was if I had time I'll tell you something but I don't have time let me read something to you and run I'll tell you tomorrow night by the way our subject tomorrow night you can't miss it so many beautiful women and so little time you can't miss it. You, you can't miss tomorrow. And I see the young men begin to laugh. So many beautiful women and so little time. I don't know why they're laughing, but you've got to be here tomorrow night. Now here, Carl Kettering, Catholicism and Fundamentalism, published 1988, page 38. He said, fundamentalists, that's people who claim that the Bible is their rule of faith and practice. He said, fundamentalists meet for worship on Sunday, yet there is no evidence in the Bible that corporate worship is to be made on Sundays. The Jewish Sabbath of rest was, of course, Saturday. Listen to this. Listen to this. Write down the source. Write down the quotation. I'm quoting from the book, Catholicism and Fundamentalism, published 1988, page 38 it says the the Jewish Sabbath was of course Saturday it was the Catholic Church that decided Sunday should be the day of worship for Christians in honor of the resurrection can you hear that they said they changed the Sabbath to Sunday to honor the day on which Christ raised from the dead. You know what Jesus asked us to do to honor his death, his burial and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 24, 25, 26, Paul says, For I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ the same night in which he was betrayed. He took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This cup, he said, Take it and eat it. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup and he said, this is the New Testament, it's my blood. As often as you drink it, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Communion service was what Jesus established. Baptism was what he established. When you're baptized, you bury the old man. You celebrate the new life. You rise up to walk in obedience to the plain verse Set the Lord God. I'm done. I'm done. Join me tomorrow night. But I tell you, beloved, if you have an open Bible, if you have an open Bible, 
if you have a clear conscience if you have an open mind you will do exactly what God says you will not follow what the beast said and I ask you who's that beast in your bed if the Lord God is your savior you ought to be in a love relationship with him I'm done oh may the grace of God be with you I know it sounds like hard stuff but may the grace of God be with you and I invite you to join me tomorrow night. Beloved, these are no days to be a coward. These are the days to take your stand for what the Lord God says. These are the days to stand up for the Bible, to stand up for truth, to come back to the plane that said the Lord God. I know some folk may be upset. These are some stuff you might not hear where you go to worship, but the everlasting gospel must be preached as a witness and then shall the end come. And my last word tonight, prepare to meet your God. I'm done. I'm done. Prepare to meet your God. Let his word be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Let his word be a lamp to your feet. Let his word be a light unto your path. And if you must break from us tonight, we'll see you tomorrow evening. But you're watching right now on your smartphone. My you're watching right now on some device somewhere. Lord, you're watching right now on a television screen or a big screen. In a rum bar or in the park. Who's the beast in your bed? The beast of Daniel 7. The beast of Revelation 13. Who's the beast in your bed? Who's that beast in your bed? You ought to change that relationship. You ought to change company. You ought to make a right about turn. You want to make a right about turn. Till I am holy. Till I am holy. people 
who must now make a decision to change relationships to fall in love with Jesus and his word tonight around the world there are honest people some are hearing these things for the first time but they must now make a decision to part company with the beast in their bed and to fall in love with Jesus to enter into a relationship with the servant creator who said that he's the husband of the church that he's the father of those who seek salvation that he brings salvation to the whole world to businessmen to students to professionals and non-professionals that he brings salvation to the whole world that he welcomes every sinner with a desire to be saved tonight Lord there are honest people confused some may even be disturbed at hearing these things God maybe some have been hearing it for a while but didn't take it serious but we are now on the verge of the coming of the Lord we pray tonight for decisions for eternal salvation we pray right now God for decision for baptism for decision to follow the Bible for decisions to obey your commandments for decision to fall in love with the Christ who died for us thank you for this power to trust and obey thank you for redemption in your blood bring us back tomorrow evening to dig a little deeper in your word is our asking tonight in Jesus name and let God's children say Amen. Until tomorrow night, thank you so much for keeping my company this evening. We'll see you by the grace of God tomorrow evening. And don't forget, connect with your friends, share the link, subscribe, like us on all of the social media platforms. Let's have a wonderful time together. We'll see you at 6.30 tomorrow evening. got some hard food tonight but praise the Lord God has given us teeth so we can chew them and I, we can tell our viewers tonight that look look choose Jesus make Jesus your choice he is there amen. with you make him your choice today amen we truly want to thank all our viewers for taking time out this evening to join us in worship oh, yes. and I know pastor you Really appreciate that too. I'm going to have you to express your final thoughts. Definitely. Sometimes the truth may be hard, but hey, follow the truth giver. Follow Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And when you have the truth of Jesus in you, the truth will set you free. We pray that God will give you through the Holy Spirit the power to make the choices for Jesus in your life Amen. and find salvation, hope, and the promise of his soon coming awesome. choose jesus choose and jesus. he will set you free that's the word of course choose jesus well it gets better tomorrow evening hey you heard the topic for tomorrow evening so we're inviting you to come on out 6 30 miami time am i right denise oh, yes i tell you we're asking everyone in the region and even beyond the region share subscribe and like tell a friend to tell a friend that's right denise yes and so i know pastor you will be uh inviting everyone in your territory and encouraging right. them to share all right because it gets better all right so we are going to pray
And the VIP room, I think we have the prayer VIP room that is coming up next. That's so right. we ask everyone to log on. Remember, you will see that in the, your chat. That is the meeting code and the password code right. as well. So send, send, the, send the code to someone and just ask them to come on in because we will be praying for you. We want to hear your testimonies as well. So please ensure. And remember, tomorrow morning we have our 24-hour prayer your room as well. We start at five, o five o'clock um, in the morning and we end at six. Also in the afternoon at four to nine o'clock. That's right. Well, on behalf of the entire production and technical team, we just want to wish you a happy and a safe night until tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Many young and old now can tell So...